everybody, this is Miles Luigi, and welcome to Chapter 5 of the Paper Mario, Mario Alone Run. Hold it! Before we enter Chapter 5, an important badge is available at Rolf's Badge Shop. All or Nothing. All or Nothing is the less expensive Power Plus badge. It increases Mario's attack power by 1 for only 4 badge points. The downside being that with All or Nothing, the game punishes act missed action commands more harshly. Missed action commands with All or Nothing on does, uh... Well, no damage instead of less damage. While this downside is normally not a problem, it poten can potentially create a problem if you use all or nothing with power bounce. With that out of our way, let's enter Chapter 5. Chapter 5 is inside a whale or tuna, I don't know, it's a fish of some kind. The boss of Chapter 5 is a fuzzy. The only problem the fuzzy poses is that he will climb on the ceiling after the first turn. Otherwise, he's weak, doesn't have a lot of HP, and is frankly a really disappointing boss. This chapter was really easy. Alright, no one's buying it. This sideshow isn't actually Chapter 5. Instead, the port in Toad Town does not have one single boat shop or boat available for rent, nor are there any ferries that go to Lava Lava Island, our destination. We need to ride this tuna whale fish to make it there. Let me repeat that. It's easier for Mario to ride a creature of the sea than it is to find a sailor take him there. Oh, for heck's sake, there aren't any, even any toad pirates that can take us to Lava Lava Island. Are the residents of Toad Town that afraid of Yoshi's, or is all of Lava Lava Island that not even toad pirates would go there? Get, uh, I will admit Mario is badass for riding a whale to the fish thing to Lava Lava Island, but uh, let's get back to the run, shall we? Lava Lava Island can be tricky for a first time player, but doesn't pose too great of a threat if you know what to expect. Many of the enemies on the island either have an easy to exploit weakness, such as jungle fuzzies, or aren't any more threatening than past enemies, such as pure guys. Also, every enemy has an attack power of 3 or less, which can be completely mitigated by defense badges if the player chooses to go that route. In my case, I decided to use both Power Plus and All or Nothing to boost Mars' attack power enough to one round every enemy without FP. So before Mario can enter the volcano in Lava Lava Island, he needs to help the resident babysitter, Sushi, get all the Yoshis out of the jungle. What kind of terrible babysitter lets the kids into the jungle? Let's go save some Yoshis before they eat a poisonous plant or something like that. In the jungle, Mario receives the Power Quake Badge. Power Quake lets Mario attack all enemies on the ground and ceiling for 4 damage plus or minus attack badges. Power Quake is a little FP heavy, however it gives Mario a decent multi-head attack for battles with multiple enemies. Granted, Mario's partners usually have better multi-head attacks than Mario, but Power Quake is a nice badge to complement that in case you want to end battles really, really quickly. Mmm-bush. 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 Nope. There's no hidden meaning behind that name. Not at all. Also, nothing strange is happening here either. And at this point, I hit the BP limit of 30 finally. If I were given the choice, I would probably keep Mario's HP and FP around 25 HP and 15 FP, and level up only badge points from here on out. Maybe HP once or twice too, from here on out, given the choice. The HP+, plus, FP+, plus, Flower Saver, and Defend Bliss badges can be used in place of higher HP and FP. Despite that, the 30 badge point limit will start becoming an issue near the end game. I thought you had Yoshis to watch. Living the tale of an adventure is a lot more difficult than reading or watching one sushi. Eh, whatever. Mario's growing audience will only serve him better when we make it to this game's sequel. One of the threatening enemies on Lava Lava Island is the Putrid Piranha, specifically for their high HP. At 12 HP, it takes a really good strong attack, or a couple good strong attacks, to one round KO one. Despite that, they only have an attack power of 2 or 3, and can poison the player. And they have a weakness to sleep. In my case, I simply decided to overpower them using Power Quake. This may not be the best low damage strategy for this encounter, however, it is efficient and ends the battle quickly, even with the Magikoopa in the back acting as the medic. And here is the Happy Heart Badge, so I'll take the opportunity to talk about it and its brother badge, Happy Flower. Both badges slowly restore HP or FP over time. Usually the badges don't restore quite enough HP or FP to provide a practical use, however, they can be useful in any prolonged battle that will take many turns to complete. Since part of my goal is to get through battles efficiently, I'm 
usually not spending too many turns in the battle, so these badges have a limited use in this run. However, they can be useful in any prolonged battle that will take many turns to complete. And the way I like to think about it is if a battle is going to take more than 10 turns, on average, Happy Heart or Happy Flower is going to restore more than 5 HP or 5 FP throughout the course of that battle. So if your battle strategy involves spending 10 turns or more, then both Happy Heart or Happy Flower will provide more for you than an HP plus or an FP plus would. Feet! Well, this good luck charm is appreciated. Thank you. Lava Lava Island's volcano is more dangerous than the island, and not just from the extreme heat that can easily burn paper. The enemies in the volcano demand a properly equipped Mario. Ice power is used to give Mario a nice, good advantage while fighting lava bubbles, spike shield for spike shot, and of course plenty of offense and defense for efficient battles and low damage. Fire shield is also useful, and appropriately collected early on in the volcano. It's an inexpensive defend plus badge for fire attacks, and also can also provide the same protection ice power does if you were to enter this volcano without equipping ice power, you just equip ice power. One distinction the original Paper Mario makes over this game's sequel is the order Mario gets his power-ups. Here, Mario gets the Ultra Hammer in Chapter 5's dungeon. The Ultra Boots aren't collectible until near the end of Chapter 6, and most players will forego the Ultra Boots until before Chapter 7. I bring this up because my Mario is currently set up with plus 2 attack power, and with the Ultra Hammer, it places the Jump and Hammer together at 8 damage, eight, 8 damage each, 4 plus 4 per, for Jump, and 8 for Hammer. Nothing special, but interesting while it lasts and having parity between the jump and hammer with additional attack power, which is, eh, I guess, a little warm feeling in the stomach. I love the hammer, that's all. Inside that chest up there is the Dizzy Stomp badge, which is similar to the Sleep Stomp badge, except it inflicts the Dizzy status ailment. Some enemies are more vulnerable to Dizzy, some enemies are more vulnerable to Sleep, so it just adds another way to exploit some future enemies' weaknesses if I choose to go that route. Seeing Colorado's clumsiness this chapter makes me wonder how clumsy he is normally and how he normally makes it through his own adventures as an archaeologist. He certainly isn't an Indiana Jones getting run over by the boulder, you know? boss of Chapter 5, the Lava Piranha, can be a difficult battle due to the sheer high attack or the giant tangled piranha plant has. Simply put, this boss can give a game over to Mario quickly. Now the normal strategy here is to make good use of an ultra ranked sushi, as her water attacks help damage the boss greatly, and paralyze the piranha plants too. In my case, the Ice Power Badge plays an incredible role during this fight, as it allows Mario to both jump on the piranha plants' heads while they're on fire, and paralyze them too. To note, this battle can be made easier by using an early fight to chill out to mitigate damage. However, when I did the math behind this battle, I didn't see it as necessary. While I take a lot of damage during the boss's first form, the second form can be completely gimped with good multi-balancing and ice power, turning the fight completely one-sided in favor for Mario.
No! You're doing it wrong, Miles Luigi. This battle strategy is strongly dependent on good action commands, which should not be an issue at this point in the game. For the record, I died three times to this boss before defeating it, which frankly should not have happened. If you want to know why rage quit is a well-known phrase in our gaming culture, it's because of how hot-headed I got while playing. A calm, cool, and collected mind would not have made the mistakes I made here. Kids, whenever you're playing a video game and starting to perform poorly, take a break. And whatever you do, don't post your failures on YouTube for the internet to mock, especially for a challenge run. Before we return to Toad Town, our little friend Junior Trooper decides to swim to Lava Lava Island to fight Mari. Wait, he swam? How far apart are Toad Town and Lava Lava Island? Did that little brat literally swim to Lava Lava Island? Not just to the island, but there and back to Toad Town? If the two locations are so close, why the hell couldn't Mario rent a boat or get a ferry? What? Oh, he took 20 damage from swimming too much. Well, not too much of this fight. If you got forgot Spike Shield or the Hammer Throw Badge, you can use Watt and Star Storm to win this fight. Next time, we'll take care of some optional boss battles, then Chapter 6. See you then. It's easy once you get to phase two. Wow. So, yeah, you're probably gonna, yeah. <laughs> See, they want you to die. 
Okay, whether I leave or not is whether I successfully pull off this multi-bounce, actually. Oh, oh shit! Oh. Shit! Colorado, get in front of me! Don't do this! Oh! Oh, no! Oh, no. Damn it. Did. Uh, let's hope you keep this up. Let's not fail to guard. There we go, much better. It's this I need to guard. Damn it! Fuck! Fuck! Damn it! Fuck! 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 Oh my. I've never put <laughs> on a maze, yes. Fuck. We're on a maze here. And I'm just going to totally kick your ass. Fuck! Fuck! That's not good. The thing is, if I get that multi-bounce off, he can't attack next phase. Period. I should have put on Mega Rush. I don't know your HP. <laughs> yeah, man. He's like, Miles, what the hell happened? Fuck! Oh my gosh. Well, if you listen to how many times he said fuck, 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 fuck like that. Yeah. Fuck! He needs a change of pace. Be happy. Don't worry. Oh, Be I actually happy. turned off my Wii. I rage shut down. Happy joy, joy, happy, happy, joy, joy. Happy, 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 joy, joy, joy. Nice. That's what we want to see. There, good, good. There you go. Well, you still did it. Didn't you see that? Positive vibes, positive vibes. Just saying. We're gonna take a moment, because I need to get this. This, this multi-bounce is essential to me winning this battle. <sighs> we can do this. You can do it. Do it. And hopefully I'm not being too distracting, but you can do it. I don't know what to think about getting two out of three. There. Awesome. <sighs> much, much, much better. Yay! 